Welcome back to Calculus 3, my math-loving friends. In section 13.5, we are looking at the chain rule in Rn. So to get us started, I want you to recall the chain rule for a single variable function. So that chain rule definition that we learned way back in Calc 1. So let's begin by considering some function y equals f of u such that u is some differentiable function of x. Then the derivative of the function f with respect to x is defined as follows. So we say that the derivative of y with respect to x is equal to the derivative of our function f with respect to u multiplied by the derivative of u with respect to x. Now, alternatively, we could use our prime notation to denote the chain rule. So again, we have the derivative of the function f with respect to u multiplied by the derivative of u with respect to x. Now, a similar extension is used to define the chain rule in Rn. So to get us started here, I want to look specifically at the chain rule in three dimensions with one parameter. So we want to let z be equal to f of x, y be some function in space where both x and y are differentiable functions of t. Now keep in mind that t is that arbitrary parameter. So it's some arbitrary real number. Then the chain rule formula for the derivative of the function z with respect to the arbitrary parameter t is defined as follows. So we already know before we define that rule that z is of course equal to f of x, y. So we have a function of two independent variables. And now this is such that x and y are both functions of t. So we can think of this as x of t and y of t. You could even rewrite this function, plugging these parametrized curves in. So we can say alternatively or equivalently that z is equal to a function f of x of t, y of t. And this of course is such that t is our arbitrary parameter, some real number. So the chain rule, the derivative of z with respect to this arbitrary parameter t is defined as follows. So we have the partial derivative of z with respect to the first variable x multiplied by the derivative of x with respect to the parameter t. Now that's just the chain rule for one of our variables. So we now need to go ahead and add the partial derivative of the function z with respect to y multiplied by the derivative of y with respect to the arbitrary parameter t. So this is our differential notation, but of course we can now use our subscript notation as well. So we can say that the derivative of our function z with respect to the parameter t is equal to the partial derivative of z with respect to x multiplied by the derivative of x with respect to the parameter t plus the partial derivative of z with respect to y multiplied by the derivative of y with respect to t. So both of these forms mean the same thing. It's a personal preference which notation you decide to use. Now we're going to be using this chain rule definition so frequently that it's going to quickly become second nature. But in the meantime, I want to provide you with a fun way to remember how to derive your chain rule formula using a tree diagram. So let's go ahead and take a look. So here's our tree diagram for the chain rule. Now this tree diagram is going to be particularly useful when our functions have more than one parameter. So there's two steps to creating this tree. The first step is that we want to connect each variable with a line where each line represents a partial derivative. Once you have created that tree, we then go ahead and multiply all partial derivatives along a branch, aka the lines, and then take the sum of all the branches. So 
To establish this tree diagram, let's again consider the same function that we did with the definition of the chain rule in R3 with one parameter. So here we are given the function z is equal to f of x, y, such that x and y are functions of a parameter t. So t is still that, that scalar value, that real number. So again, step one asks us to connect each variable with a line. So we have the variable z. Now z is a function of x and y, and x is a function of t, and y is a function of t. So we need to connect all of these variables with a line. So we have a line from z to x, which represents the partial derivative of z with respect to x. And then we have a line connecting x to t, which represents the derivative of x with respect to t. Now for the other variable, we have a line connecting z to y, which represents the partial derivative of z with respect to y. And then we have a line connecting y to t, which represents the derivative of y with respect to t. Now step two asks us to multiply all partial derivatives along a branch. So working off our left-hand branch, we want to multiply the partial derivative of z with respect to x multiplied by the partial derivative of x with respect to t. And so this leaves us with the partial derivative of z with respect to x multiplied by the derivative of x with respect to the parameter t. Now we want to do the same thing along our right-hand branch. So we are going to take the partial derivative of z with respect to y and multiply it by the derivative of y with respect to t. So that leaves us with the product, the partial derivative of z with respect to y, multiplied by the derivative of y with respect to the parameter t. And now, once you have multiplied all these partial derivatives together along a branch, all that's left is to take the sum of these branches. Oops, we did it! And this leaves us with the derivative of z with respect to the parameter t. Woohoo! So this is the tree diagram to help us remember or to derive the chain rule for a function in Rn.